Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This is part one of my overloading methods tutorial. I'm going to open up my website here, javacjava.com. Click on the pop-out menu and select Java OOP Tutorials. I'm going to scroll down to the Method Overloading Part 1 Tutorial. And basically a method signature is the method name followed by the parameter list enclosed in parentheses. Method overloading occurs when you have multiple methods in the same class with the same name but with different signatures. Being able to overload a method allows us to provide a single method name that will function slightly different, slightly different based on the arguments specified when calling the method. Okay, let's come down here and do some code to explain all that. We'll highlight this, hit Control C or right click and select copy. Let's move the browser off screen here. I've got a command prompt shortcut down here, but if you don't have it, you can right click and select new shortcut, type in CMD next and finish All right it's just that easy we'll open up our command prompt here type in java c it's a java compiler you should see all this all these basically this flags and stuff come scrolling by if you don't see this then you don't have it installed and configured properly go ahead and watch my tutorial on installing the java development kit make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing on CLS to clear the screen, CD space backslash, CD short for change directory, backslash tells it to go to the root. We're going to make a directory called Java. I already have it, but if you didn't, it would go ahead and create it for you. And then we'll make another directory, and we'll call this um, method overloading one. And then we'll do notepad method overloading one.java. Method overloading 1.java is going to be the name of our source code file, otherwise known as our compilation unit. And I'll hit Control V to paste this stuff in there and we'll save this out. So we have two classes in this source code file here. We have our box class and then we have our method overloading 1 class. Method overloading 1 class has the main method entry point. Box class, we're just going to use that to create objects. It has two overloaded methods in it there. So the first one here is called calculate volume. The second one is also called calculate volume. Now the method signature is the name of the method plus the parameter list enclosed in parentheses after the name of the method. Right, so you can see we've got uh, int data type length, int data type height, int data type width, all separated by commas. So it's our parameter list right here. Now we also have calculate volume and its method signature is different. Even though it has the same number of parameters, it has double length, comma, double width, or I'm sorry, double height, comma, double width. So the data types in this signature are different than the data types up here, the primitive data types specifically. Our return value really has nothing to do with an overloaded method. I'll get into that in the future tutorials there, but this is going to return an int data type. This is going to return a double data type makes sense you know doubles will have decimal points and fractional values and whatnot there we want to make sure that we just don't end up calling something like an int like this right that would then cause it to drop uh, drop data there okay so we're simply taking the parameters length times height times width and we're returning that value right since these are passed in as ints all this will be calculated as an int data type and returned as an int data type right same thing down here length times height times width, right? All these are double data types being passed in, so it will return a double data type based on that. So, and just to know, to let you know, these are what's called local variables. And these local variables, their scope is defined inside of the whole method declaration, right? So this length has absolutely nothing to do with this length. It's not like we're redeclaring it or anything like that. This length is local to this method declaration, right? And this length is local to this method declaration. And with that being said, let's go ahead and come up here and to the method overloading one class and our main method entry point. First thing I do in here is I create a reference variable B of box data type and I assign it to a new box object. 
and basically at that point in time we can take the b um, the b reference variable that's pointing that has is assigned to a box object and we can invoke the calculate volume method right the calculate volume method um, in this particular case we're passing it five five and five now those are all int data types because they don't have any sort of uh, decimal point after many fractional values so they're int data types so it comes down here and on the in the box object right it says okay let's find the uh, the one that matches the signature here the method that matches the signature and here sure enough we have an int an int and an int and that's all it cares about right is that it matches that so then it'll go ahead and take the argument of 5, 5, and 5 and pass it into the parameter of length, height, and width accordingly, right? We'll then return the length times height times width, which is 5 times 5 times 5, which is 125, right? And we'll return that as an int data type, right? And that'll be right here. The assignment operator then will assign I result 125, and then we've basically moved on, and that's it for this statement. In the next line, I'm going to use the print line method to display this string literal to the console, box dimensions, 5 times 5 times 5, comma volume equals, and then plus the I result, which at this point should hold 125. And that's the, that's the end of it for this statement. And in the next statement, I'm going to use, still use the same B box object there, right, to invoke the calculate volume. Um, method, which is exactly the same up here, right, only I'm passing in as, our, well, the arguments are 4.5, 5.2, and 6.2. So this basically says, okay, um, I need to find a method in the box class that is either float, 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 or double, 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 because that's the only thing these could really be, right? As a matter of fact, if they were floats by, by default, um, a, a float literal or a double literal, right? Um, a float literal should have an F at the end, right? By default, they default to double literals. So we don't actually have to put that, that, that D here, right? But um, it's going to say, okay, I need to find either a float or a double, float, 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 or double, double, double. Technically, it's double, double, double that it's looking for. And it comes down here and says, oh, look, I've got a method signature, calculate volume with double, double, double. So I'm going to pass in four point. 5, 5.2, and 6.2 to these respective parameters. And then I'm going to multiply length times height times width, and I'm going to return that double volume as a double here, right? So whatever that value is, then we'll be assigned to our D result variable, which is a double data type. So everything matches. That statement goes through no problem. And then on the next line, we'll display to the console box dimensions. 4.5 times 5.2 times 6.2, and then the volume equals plus D result. So, so far pretty straightforward there. Now I'm going to invoke the overloaded methods without using reference variables, right? So, um, basically what we've, what we've got here, and if you watched some of my previous tutorials on um, constructor um, the part one through five there, I went over some of the syntax where we don't use a reference variable to return back a volume, but I'll go over a little bit more of that there. So the first statement, we are invoking the print line method to display this string literal here, box dimensions, eight times five times nine, volume equals, plus, and then new box, new key operator will return back an object reference of box type that we immediately invoke the dot calculate volume method on with the arguments of eight, five, and nine. That will then look for um, a method in there that's basically an int, int, and int, right? It'll come down here, find this one, and return length times height times width as an int data type. And that'll be right there, right? Basically, that's where it'll return back the int data type, which will be whatever that calculation comes out to be, okay? Now in the next one here, I'm doing the print line, next statement, I'm doing the print line method, passing this string literal with 6.2 and 9.2 and 1.5 being multiplied together for our volume. And then I'm enclosing it in parentheses here to maybe make it a little bit more readable and easier to understand. So the new operator, right, 
and basically creates a new box object, right, and returns back a reference that we immediately invoke the dot calculate volume method on with the arguments of 6.2, 9.2, and 1.5. Inside of the box object, it comes down and says, okay, do we have a method signature that matches the, uh, we're either gonna need like a float or a double, right? Double most likely, because the I just went through that defaults to double type values whenever you have a decimal point in it there. So this is up, oh, no, this one doesn't match, that's in, 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 oh, hey, we've got this method here that does match, double, double, double. So I'm gonna pass, I'm gonna pass in 6.2, 9.2, and 1.2 all in the length, height, and width accordingly there. Multiply length times height times width. Return that double volume as a double, as a double primitive data type there, okay? And then we will just basically, that's gonna be returned right there and we'll display that at the end of our string literal to the console. So let's go ahead and save this out. Um, let's clear our screen, type in Java C. And to compile it there, Java C method overloading one dot Java. We didn't get any error messages, so it compiled successfully. And now we'll go ahead and run it in Java and we'll invoke the method overloading one class and we'll look for the main entry point here and it'll run everything inside of the main methods code main method method body from top down okay so we get box dimensions five by five by five 125 right and you can see we invoke the dot calculate volume um, passing these three int data type parameters here and then down here 4.5 times 5.2 times 6.2 volume equals 145.08 so you can see that obviously work there too and we use the exact same calculate volume um, method right only we use the overloaded method here of double type down there right and that displayed our volume there and then we used uh, basically the, did the same volume calculations without even using an, uh, a reference variable. So uh, 8 times 5 times 9, volume equals 360. Yeah, 8 times 5 is 40 times 9, that's definitely 360. And then in the final one here, I did the same thing, only I enclosed it in parentheses to try to make it a little bit more readable. I could actually, for me, this, this is just as readable as as, as this little chunk right here, but sometimes that helps out if you're not familiar with this sort of syntax to enclose it in parentheses and understand how it gets tacked on. Okay, so 6.2 times 9.2 times 1.5, volume equals 85.56, so that looks pretty good to me. Um, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and just highlight this here. So here's one overloaded method. Here's another overloaded method. Same name, different signature, and the return type has absolutely nothing to do with the overloaded method and how it works there. They just happen to be different data types in this particular scenario. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this, close out of that, leave you with some final thoughts. In this simple example of method overloading, we only have to invoke one method name and supply different arguments. If Java did not support method overloading, then I would have had to create both like a calculate, you know, I'm going to move this over here for you real quick. I would have had to uh, had to create both a calculate int volume method and a calculate double volume method, right? Now, you can imagine how difficult things could become if there were separate method names because of subtle differences in the data type being passed or returned. Method overloading is used everywhere in Java programming. You want to make sure that you have a clear understanding of how it works. Move that off screen. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.